Well, hi everyone and welcome back to Waterhouse Ford. So in our last video you saw us uh, rebuilding the spindle um, for the right hand side um, and at the start of that video we also talked a little bit about the kit that um, Anglo have developed which basically gives you all of the um, replacement parts that you would need to rebuild both sides um, the spindles so that gives you all the, the spindle bushes the seals, the bearings, uh, the thrust bearing that sits at the bottom, and, and, and actually the spindle as well, um, the spindle assembly. Now, also included in the kit is everything you need to rebuild the hub. Um, so in our last video, we completed the rebuild of the spindle, and in this video, we're going to rebuild the hub uh, for one side. Now, obviously, you have to do this twice. I'm just filming it once. Um, but of course you need to you do need to obviously repeat this for the other side so what we've got now we've got this uh the hub it's in the vase um, as you can see again we've cleaned it up we've uh, given it a base coat uh in gray and what we're going to do is start by installing the bearing race then the seal at the back here then we're going to bring the spindle in again and we're going to fit this onto the spindle and fit the front bearing uh, lock nut and um, uh, lock washer and uh, castellated nut etc. Um, now I've been doing some research when in the video where we dismantled this um, I did kind of talk a little bit about this hole um, that's on the side here and the fact that it's got a plug in it. Now in actual fact these hubs were originally designed to be oil filled and not grease uh, filled. Um, Subsequent to that, the, the, the bearings were changed and um, we basically, we, we, you know, obviously things have advanced since then and today we use grease. Now, there isn't a, I don't believe, a grease nipple that will fit into that thread. Um, so you do kind of, you're kind of stuck with needing to pack this hub full of grease. Now, not full, but you need to pack the bearings and you need to put a little bit of extra grease in here to make sure that those bearings stay well lubricated but again we'll deal with that as we as we move along so again if you look in your kit you have two sets of bearings um, there's a small one which is basically the outer bearing and then the larger one which is your inner bearing so we're going to start with the the larger inner bearing and just get this opened And there we go, there's your, your bearing. It's a lovely um, finish, feels beautiful. And there we go. Now what we've got to do is get the race in. Now the race wants to go, obviously it's conical, so you've got a fat side and a thin side. You want to put the fat side in or down in this orientation. So that fits in there, well sits in there, and we now need to get that in and you know, basically knock that in into its um, location. Okay, now what I have is this, um, uh, I'm not really sure what you call it, but it's basically a, a, a pushing, or a, not a pushing, a, it's used, it's, it, well, it comes from a set that I bought, um, for use on the press. Now, we could move over to the press and we could do this there, but I'm always conscious that not everybody has a press, so I wanted to just kind of show how to do it without a press. Um, now look, that fits nicely over that um, race. This is only going to get us started and then we're going to move to, a, to another one. But I can see looking at it that I'm a little bit higher on this side. So what I want to do is gently tap it on that side. And then gently move around there you go that's now set or seated now what we're going to do is move to this larger um, drift I suppose you'd call it and again we're gonna just gently tap that in
There we are, that's gone home perfectly. Oh no, it needs to go a bit more. And you'll feel when it's home, um, the, the note of the bang changes, but you also, it suddenly feels very solid. There we are. So that's now sitting right down against the lip at the back. So now we want to grease our bearing because that's the next thing that goes in. So we want to get a fair amount of grease. And then on just on the palm of your hand like that and then taking the bearing we want to push the grease through through the rollers like that. I need some more grease actually. Okay. And the idea is obviously to squeeze the grease in between the rollers so that essentially you want to try and get the grease to the back of the roller as best you can. And you can see how it's coming through on the other side here, right? And that's what you're looking for. Basically, you want your bearing filled with grease all the way around. And you keep turning it. and working that grease in to where it's coming out the back here. You can see it's sort of full full here but not so much there so we need a bit more on that side. It's full all the way around, just maybe a little bit more there now. So there we go. That's um, that bearing is now well greased, and we can pop that in there, just like so. Now we get the grease off of our hands. Or at least the majority of it. Right now, the next thing is the oil seal that goes in the back here. And what we're going to do is take a little bit of this excess grease and just grease the surface. Might need a bit more actually. I want to get that surface nicely oiled. like that. Right, now we're going to take our oil seal now the oil seal has um, inside of it you've got the spring, a wire spring all the way around right so that spring goes towards the oil or the grease in this in this case so you know that that goes that way and again we can um, just use a drift to gently tap that in Gonna need a bigger to get a bigger drift. There we go. Now on this, what you want is you want the outside diameter to be just inside the outside diameter of your seal. In other words, this needs to be able to go into the same recess 
as the seal is going into without it getting stuck. You want it as large as possible without it going to you know, without it getting stuck. And what we want to do is just gently continue to tap that down. And you'll feel when it's home. Now it looks to me like it's gone home on one side and not on the other, so we'll just there you go. It's nice and straight, and it's gone all the way down. Okay. Right, so that's shall we say the back end of the hub. Right, now before we move on to the spindle, we just need to quickly get the race into the, on the, the front, sorry, the outer bearing race into the front of the hub as well. So, we'll grab the, um, what is the smaller of the two bearings. And again, we can feel that's a lovely, lovely fit. And what we're going to do, we take the race and we want to get that down in there. That feels very tight. It is tight, yeah. Okay, um, get a little bit of grease onto that surface so that we, so that this will ease down nicely. that to go as straight as possible bearing in mind you've got threads inside here for the um, hub cap so you don't want to damage those you want to try and ease it past those before you start hitting anything so that is now down and we've got a drift that's again just slightly smaller than the outer circumference of that race and we're going to gently tap this in Gentle to start with, just to get it started, and then of course we'll give it a bit more. hits home it's um, you feel it straight away now I'm just gonna wipe that because it seems to have gotten a little bit of dust on it it's most actually it's mostly grease okay so now we can bring the spindle in and we can bring this on to the spindle and then we'll fit our bearing so we'll grease our bearing fit that and um, that's pretty much the job so um, let's move that off and we'll bring the spindle in okay so now we've got the the subframe back in the vase mounted or uh, supported around this um, not quite sure what you call it, but basically the bottom of the hub here, the bottom of the spindle. Um, now what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to put a little bit of grease all the way around or all the way along this shaft. We want this to slip on nicely and our bearing and our oil seal need to go on. The ones that we've just put in, they need to come onto the shoulder so the the oil seal rides on this shoulder 
and the bearing on that shoulder there. So we want to make sure those are nicely lubricated. And our front bearing is going to run over here. So we'll put a little bit there as well just to make sure that that one slips on nicely when we get there as well. Okay, now that that's greased up, we can bring our hub in, and slide it into position. which it should feels to me like that should go further yeah maybe not okay we seem to have a bit of a gap here at the back which I don't recall having before but um, hmm. okay, let's see how we go. So again, now what we're going to do is get that now the inner bearing, the, uh, sorry, the outer bearing. We're going to get that greased up now as well. Same method. Forcing the grease in between the rollers. Working our way around. And when we turn it over we should see grease popping out the back as you can see there. That bearing is well greased. Maybe a little bit more over there. That's it. And that's it, basically. So we can get that bearing in now. Okay, and we may need to just work that in. There we go. Right, next is the uh, retaining washer, which again has that little um, indent there, which goes on to, or into that groove in the shaft. And then we bring our castellated nut and um, we screw that down. Now, before I carry on, I now want to get some grease into this inside the, the actual hub, which really I should have done before I put that bearing in. Um, let me see if I can squirt some into this hole. I'm going to squirt some into this hole using the grease gun. Of course, doing it this way, I can't see how much is going in, but I'm guessing... Well, that's no different to when you've got a grease nipple, I guess. I guess one could make um, a blanking plate for this hole and um, and then put a grease nipple into it. That might work. Right, that seems to be full because it's oozing all out the side. Maybe if we turn it a bit. Okay, I'm going to call that good. 
I can always add some again later. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly just put that plug back in. So back to here, we can now pop the um, castellated nut on. And remember, these sometimes struggle. Oh. Uh -huh. oh. Okay, so the I'll just check the. This nut is a different size to the one that came off of there. Um, so they've obviously decided to go with a smaller nut. Um, so the previous one was uh, one and a quarter I think it was, one and, one and a quarter inch. This one I found that <laughs> seems to be more metric, so 29 metric fits um, quite well. Right, now tensioning or rather putting pressure onto these thrust bearings. Again, I spoke a little bit about this in, in the video where we were dismantling the hub. It's important to get a good amount of pressure on the thrust bearings, but not to the point where you are necessarily burdening the bearing, essentially. Um, what you want to do, and the way you do that, is you tighten it up quite tight. So you'll see now the hub is it's turning, but it's not smooth. We might go a little bit more, actually. Okay, so it's really not very happy there. Now what you want to do is back off, keeping a note of where your holes are for your split pin. And now we see that's turning nice and smoothly. We've got no sideways movement, as in the hub can't move back or forth. And those bearings are essentially well supported now. I've made sure that I'm lined up with one of the castel one of the castellations is lined up with a hole in the shaft. So you do unfortunately have to kind of work to those positions, but yeah, I'm happy with that that tension. So now we can take one of our split pins. And if you want to um test it. it, it doesn't matter, it's okay to kind of move this a little bit and see how you feel. Um, so for example if I took this back another turn, well now in order to get to the next castellation you can see that that nut is now finger tight, that would be too loose. And if I'm not mistaken, this hub I can actually feel a little bit of movement in there. So that's too too loose. So what we want to do is bring that back up one flat basically to where that hole lines up with the castellation which is there. And again no movement whatsoever in there and the turning is free. It is no, well, there's only a, there's a little bit of resistance, but it's, it's essentially just the working of the grease in, I mean the bearings and the grease in it and etc etc. So, right, so I'm going to go with that. Now with our split pin, we need, we need this to clear the hub cap. 
So what I found is you sometimes have to just tap that head perhaps a little further than you normally would. And now what we can do is um, just bend those legs up. The nice thing about this split pin is that it's not the legs are not too long. Sometimes I find the ones that you buy in the in these packs, the legs are so long you you, you generally have to cut a piece off, which is no bother, but these ones are perfectly sized, it would seem. And then what I'm going to do is just um, This is being painful now. There we go. So that's not going to come off. And we're still feeling good on the wheel. Feeling good on the spindle. Right, now the cap, the hub cap. What you want to do is put a little bit of oil on these threads. It's a very, very fine thread, and I find that if it's not oiled, it, you struggle, well, not struggle, but it doesn't go in quite as easily. Um, so what we want to do is, oh, that split pin's not. I thought it was passed, but it's not. Let's try that again. There we go. Now, when these, obviously, as I said before, this was oil filled. Um, this, there used to be a, well, there would have been an oil seal, essentially a gasket that went on there. But now, now with the, with the use of grease, that's no longer required. As you can see, it's um, not the easiest. Oh, hang on, that's bonding now. I 
the finding. Yeah, that split pin is bonding on the cap again. Right, I'm going to need to push that a lot further in. Let's try that. You can put a little bit of grease in here as well if you wanted to, you know, just pack the front of the bearing with a bit of grease. I don't like to do that though because it um, basically just cause it, you can then get grease essentially leaking out or weeping out from this hubcap which just looks untidy um, and, the, and the bearing doesn't really need it. And once you've greased it the way we have, it shouldn't need that. Okay, so that's now up, that hub is free again, feels lovely, right, so now what I want to do, this does not have to be uber tight, right, you, you don't want to make it so tight that you're going to struggle to get it off again, but at the same time, you know, you don't want it flying off or spinning off, so, and that's why it's such a fine thread, is to stop it from spinning off, I'm going to just, um, Well, look, I might, I might tighten that once I've got the wheel studs back in, but um, there we go. All right, that's tight enough for now. So yeah, look, that's the um, the hub on, bearings replaced, and as I said, that now feels lovely. Great. Now. Thinking about it, I probably should have put the wheel studs in before I um, remounted the the hub. What I probably should have done is put the races in, the, the bearing races, and that oil seal at the back, then put the studs in, because obviously the studs are in the way, or kind of in the way when you're trying to hammer those um, races in. So then maybe put the races in, put the oil seal in, put the studs in, and then mount the um, the hub, so that's a little bit of a pain in the you know what. But um, I guess I'll just do that manually now. Um, let's have a look and see how they go in. Okay, so what Angler have sent me is this um, wheel stud, and it, uh, unlike the ones that we took out of here. Sorry, there it is there. Um, the ones we took out, they had a, a larger head at the back, a blind head, with a slot on one side, and that would fit, you know, that fits nicely against the recess um, that's provided on the hub. Now, these, on the other hand, have the serrated shoulder on this side. Um, the part number is A63510. So, I'm going to try these, and the idea, obviously, is that you need to press them into the holes. So obviously that shoulder is um, a little bit larger than it needs to be and the idea is that it presses into to this, um, to this flange. Now obviously that's quite, well I'm imagining it's going to be reasonably difficult to do. I'm going to try to do it using an old nut which happens to be the same size and um, thread and see if I can get that to pull in straight
I need to find a way of um, locking this. Hang on. This is going to. It's not. Doesn't seem to be pulling straight to me, but. Um, yeah, I think ideally what you would do is uh, is probably have this sitting down um, and, and basically hit them in or use a press, which would be ideal. Okay, I've just got this um, wedge in there. I'm hoping that that's going to hold it. Um, thinking that as I tighten this, hopefully it will begin to straighten out. If not, we may have to um, hit it. Not convinced that, that the head of that stud is actually going to go past this flange. Let me bring the camera around to the other side so you can see what I'm seeing. Okay, I can't really get a better angle than that, but I think you can see here that this this flange here, this head needs to go in against it. And looking at it, it doesn't look to me like it's going to. We'll keep going a little bit and see if it um, manages to slip past. It looks like it might just be slipping past, so I'll um, I'll keep going. Fortunately, it's um, slipping in the vase now. Let me just keep going. What I might do with the others is just grind a little flat edge on them. I may even take this one out and do this one as well. So the other way to do it would be to, I suppose, uh, you don't, I, can't, I haven't got a clamp strong enough, but I guess you could put a try and put a clamp on here and press it in that way, but um, with a tube on the other side to allow it to come through. But um, like I say, I don't think I've got a, um, a clamp that would be strong enough for that. I'm just going to take this off now. 
and just loosen this and just make sure that we're not damaging any threads or anything. That's the thing I'm most worried about. It doesn't seem to, it seems absolutely fine. I suppose if you think about how tight people sometimes make wheel nuts, I guess it's, um, yeah, look, I think I'm going to try and knock that out and grind a little flat edge on it because that is def that flange is definitely holding it back which isn't helping with this whole exercise Okay, there you go. Um, I can't see what you can see, but there you go. I've just um, ground a little flat edge on there. It's not a lot. Hopefully just enough to um, allow it to go past that. I think I might do just a little bit more actually. Okay, let's try again, see if we can get it to um, go into position there. certainly seems to be going more easily. That's it. So now we can take that nut off and we have a wheel stud mounted perfectly. So not the way to do it obviously. If, um, if you're doing this I obviously strongly recommend that you pop your studs in before mounting the hub onto the uh, onto the axle, um, but I'm going to carry on with these now and get the others done. But um, yeah, that's one way to do it. If like if you're like me and you forget, then certainly that's the way to do it. Okay, well listen, uh, thanks very much for watching. That's we're going to leave it there for today. That. Um, Basically remounting and uh, sorting out the hub. Let me zoom out a little bit. So getting the hub, um, getting the bearings in, oil seal on the back, and um, obviously mounting the hub onto onto the stub axle. Here you can see this gap that I was talking about earlier. Um, again, I don't recall that being there on the previous ones when I dismantled them, but I might be wrong. Um, it does just seem 
a bit silly really that that gap is there but um, that's the way it seems to be so and everything's fitting properly at the front so I don't think that it um, I don't think that it will go any further back so yeah anyway look that's it for today thank you very much for watching and uh, we also you know, I hope that you have a good week uh, ahead and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers for now.